Hello everybody, welcome to my channel Bible Time. In this video I have a very interesting topic about the sabbatical year. You will understand the counting, the agricultural cycle, and the historical Sabbath years. When you come into the land which I give to you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath to Jehovah. This verse shows when the counting started, but there are two theories about it. We will explain that later in the video. You shall sow your fields six years, and you shall prune your vineyard six years, and shall gather its produce. The planted time are during the autumn and winter seasons. During the winter, the grapevines lose their leaves. This period is the ideal time to prune the vines. Then, the gathering of the produce of the land will be during the spring and summer seasons. You shall not reap that which brought with sell of your harvest, and you shall not gather the grapes of your kept vine. It shall be a year of rest to the land. During the seventh year was absolutely forbidden to plant and reap. We were able to just eat them. It's impossible to begin the sabbatical year during spring, and this proved that the sabbatical year begins during the autumn season, which is the cycle of the land. You may plant your land for six years and gather its crops, but during the seventh year you must leave it alone and withdraw from it. The needy among you will then be able to eat just as you do, and whatever is left over can be eaten by wild animals. This also applies to your vineyard and your olive group. Also, the piece of harvest, the first fruits of your labor, what you saw in the land. It's impossible to begin the sabbatical year during spring, since this proves that the sabbatical year must have begun during the autumn season, which is the cycle of the land. The agricultural cycle and the new year cycle. The scriptures give us a clue that there are two different cycles the cycle of the months of the year and the agricultural cycle. The agricultural cycle is the annual cycle of activity related to the growth of harvest of a crop. These activities include loosening the soil, seeding, special watering, moving plants when they grow bigger, and harvesting among others. Throughout the 12 months of the year, six months are for reaping, harvesting, and storing up the fruits, and the second half for growing and planting the seeds. The cycle finished in the seventh month of the year, and this month all the harvest must be stored up. In the seventh month finish the harvest of the crops. In this month all the Israelites should have gathered all the harvest and get ready to keep the festival. This is the month when the sabbatical years began in Israel. The seventh month in scriptures is called the end of the year, are you gathering your work from the field. After the Feast of Sukkot, the people were allowed to plant and sow the land. When Elijah returned from Mount Sinai, he found Elisha growing in the land, and around the later part of the twelfth month began the harvest of flax. This is the time of harvest of crops during the spring and summer. Around the later part of the twelfth month and the beginning of the first month was the harvest of the flax. The spies were hidden with stalks of flax by their half. We know that this happened in the first days of the first month. Then, during the first and the second month was the harvest of the barley, and in the third month was the harvest of the wheat. During the fourth and fifth month were the harvest of vines. This was the time when the spies were sent out by Moses and brought one cluster of grapes, pomegranates, and figs. And around the sixth month was the gathering of all the summer fruits. So there are two cycles in the Bible. The first began in Chodesh Habib, and the other cycle in Chodesh Hashabi. It's really important to know these two cycles so we can understand Leviticus 25 20, 22. God will command his blessing on the seed year and will produce for three years the seed the seventh and the eighth. So, why until the ninth year? This understood counting for the month Habib in the ninth year, being the second half of the eighth year, when we will be eating the old crops. That's it. The first half of the seventh year was the second half of the seventh year, eating of the old crops for three years. 
Nehemiah was the governor of Judah during the reign of Artaxerxes, and they swear to keep the law of Moses in the Shemitah year. Nehemiah came to Jerusalem in the 20th year of Artaxerxes. He was in the 4045 BCE, and he was in Judah or in Judea for 12 years, until the 32nd year of Artaxerxes. There is a sabbatical year during the summer of 162 BCE in the book of Maccabees. There is another sabbatical year during the spring in 134 BCE in the book of Josephus. There is a sabbatical year also during the summer in 36 BCE when Herod was taking the city of Jerusalem, written in the book of Josephus too and another sabbatical year during the summer in 70 CE when the second temple was destroyed and it is written in the Talmud. And Jehovah spoke to Moses in Mount Sinai saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give to you, then the land shall give a Sabbath to Jehovah. Now let's understand the verse, When you come into the land which I give to you. Moses died in the fourth year, and the Israelites fought during six years. In the seventh year, they took the land, and Joshua gave it to Israel. There is a controversy when the Israelites began to count the sabbatical years in the Jubilee years. The Samaritans count since they entered the land, but in the seventh land, when Joshua gave the portions of the land in Canaan. Israel came to the Promised Land, 40 years after the Exodus, God gave to Israel the promised land six years after they entered the land, and they rested of fighting against the Canaanites in the seventh year of war. The sons of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan 45 years after Moses sent spies out to explore the land. Caleb was 40 years since then, and when he and the tribes inherited in the land, Caleb was 85 years. This is the only one reference to know the time when the Israelites inherited the land of Canaan. It's Caleb's age. So God gave the promised land to Israel 46 years after the Exodus. The tribe of Judah and the tribe of Joseph received the inheritance 46 years after they came out of Egypt, and they fought in Canaan for six years. In the second year, Caleb was 40 when he was sent to spy out the land. And in the year 47, the tribe received the inheritance when Caleb was 8 to 5 years old. The beginning of the cycle of Sabbath and Jubilee years occurred six years after the arrival of the Israelites in the land of Canaan, and 46 years after they came out of Egypt. Israel began to count the sabbatical in Jubilee years since Joshua took the land and gave it to Israel. As a matter of fact, when they returned from the Babylon captivity, they didn't start a new Sabbath year cycle. The first year of Cyrus was in 538 BCE. They built the altar of the sacrifice in the seventh month, and the next year began to build the temple. During the tenth year, Zedekiah made a covenant with the people in Jerusalem to set free the Hebrew slaves. But the people enslaved them again when the Babylon's army was gone up from Jerusalem. The sabbatical year was in 589, according to the historical Sabbath years found in the book of Maccabees, Josephus, and the Talmud. Making some retro calculations from the historical Sabbath years, we find that the temple was destroyed in the second year of the cycle. We know according to the book of Jeremiah 40.12, the people gathered wine and solar fruits very much. It seems to be that that year wasn't a sabbatical year as the Talmud claimed to be. Now, during the reign of Hezekiah, there is something very curious. The prophet Yeshua gave a sign to the king and his people. In the 14th year, probably during the winter months, the prophet said that they shall eat that year which brought of itself. In Hebrew, the word is Safiyah, 
found only in four verses of the Bible, in Leviticus 25, in 2 Kings 19.29, and in chapter 27 of the book of Yeshua. In the second year, that which springs of the same, the Hebrew word is Sahish, only found in these verbs. And in the third year, they were allowed to sow, reap, plant the vineyards, and eat the fruit. Making retro calculation for the historical Sabbath years, we find that the year 708 BCE was a sabbatical year. This really fits with the cycle taken from reference the historical records of the sabbatical years. It seems to show a sabbatical in Jubilee year, and most Jews don't see this as the year of Shemitah because the chronology of the Southern Lamb doesn't fit with the cycle. It was the fourth year of the cycle in the 14th year of Hezekiah according to the Senate of Lamb. But the cycle is wrong because they counted 490 years from the first destruction of the temple by the Babylons to the second destruction of the temple by the Romans. In another video, I will explain the mistakes of the Senate of Lamb. Now, the most incredible thing was when Jesus died in a sabbatical year. The Jews expected the coming of the Messiah at the beginning or at the end of the sabbatical year according to the Talmud. The ministry of the Messiah was only one year. Luke recorded the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius, and in Passover the Pharisees said to Jesus that the temple was in building for 46 years. Herod began to build in his 18th year in 20 BCE. The Sabbath year and Jubilee year was a time maker to recognize the coming of the Messiah. Thank you for listening and watching my presentation. God bless you. See you next time.